So this is the second video. This video is going to focus on the construction techniques, mechanical construction techniques used to, to build the, the Columbian Western Railway. Um, most of the railway, nearly all of it, is built from three quarter inch good one side plywood. I found it's been very reliable. I've had very little movement. Um, the, there's four levels to the layout. The first is a hidden storage area. The second is a primary switching area at around 42 inches in height off the floor. The third is uh, the grade to Farron Summit, and the fourth, which you can't see in this view, uh, is actually the, um, uh, the cusp rosebury section. Most areas of the railway include storage, which is built above it. However, this is still a uh, two-car garage with an operating um, two operating garage doors that actually pull up into pockets that are suspended above the layout. I use a, a valence, and behind the valence uh, are compact fluorescents, and they're on three separate light circuits which I can control here. I also have some dimmable lights in, but I don't have the dimmable light circuits working. So the uh, lowest level is the storage area. And I'll turn the lights on here. So most of the trains are storaged, however not staged, in a pull-out indexed yard. The clicking you hear are detente at both ends. Uh, there is also a pulley system that assures that both ends of the storage yard uh, move at the same time regardless of where you push so it doesn't jam. So this is where uh, between operating sessions I store trains. Uh, originally I intended to use it as staging, however I rethought that idea and decided that the climbs uh, on the helixes out of the storage and the actual workings of the, the storage yard would be too much of an interference to the operation. So staging actually occurs at the tops and bottoms and middle of the helixes that exist on the layout. So this is the storage yard. There's also a turning loop uh, to the left of this view. Uh, this remains closed and isn't used in operations. Let me just turn that off. There are two helixes in the layout. The largest one is a two-turn helix that comes from storage. About midway up the middle of the, the helix, uh, there is a Y configuration and a staging yard for the eastern section of the layout, which is Creston, Cranbrook, and the connection with the Union Pacific at Kingsgate. That helix then, if used in a continuous run, continues to climb, uh, and then there actually there are two trade staging tracks, staging for the West Grand Forks Midway and the Carmi Sub at the very top of this helix. So trains that are running to the west will actually just pass from view at Carmi and move directly into staging. Uh, trains coming from the east move through the um, tunnel or the, through the backdrop at Troop, and then move directly into staging. Uh, the final staging is actually the southern staging, which is a helix which is constructed in sort of an inverse um, wedding cake arrangement, which is used for staging trains. There's two, tra uh, two yard tracks at the top of uh, this helix that are used for staging the trains from uh, Trail and Warfield. But that uh, helix continues to fall and then enters storage. So the eight track pullout storage actually feeds east, west, and south uh, staging of the layout, and that's very flexible so that between um, operating sessions I can restage trains very, very quickly uh, or run continuous run if I, if I like. Um, in order to keep track of the trains, there's an infrared uh, detection system that allows me to detect exactly where all the trains are in the helix, and we'll see that in operation in, in the other videos. The four levels of the layout uh, in some areas are actually constructed in um, what I call a double mushroom configuration. The second level in the Slocan division, 46, uh, 42 inches high, uh, is the inside of one section of the, of the mushroom. The climb to Farron on the third level is on the other side of the mushroom, so they can't actually see each other. They're stacked over top of each other. And then the fourth level uh, is the section to Rosebury and a Cusp, and that exists over top of the climb to Farron. Uh, and to access that, you access it, you operate it with a pull-out step that runs on a 2x4 rail. It doesn't take much effort at all to pull it out. And then when you put your weight on it, it actually sinks to the floor. So it's very, very stable and can be used to operate the fourth level. This lower section here is to operate the cusp because of the limited headroom due to the fact that this is actually a suspended ceiling that allows the garage doors to open and close. There are four gates on the layout that are used to access. Uh, one of them is left closed during the operating session. This includes the section of Fife. 
and has the backdrop and lighting system attached to it to show how it works. So this is uh, closed after the operators enter for the operating session. So that you don't have to do this every time anyone enters or leaves. And it's just held down. It's pulled together uh, with some latches and then lined up. And I've had very good reliable operation from that. Below it is a swing gate uh, and there's actually a little stool that can be used if an operator wants so it can scoot underneath it. This clearance is about 50 inches, so it's not too bad a duck, but if people don't want to duck, they can use the stool. This gate just simply closes like that. And its operation includes ball detente at the end, and then there's a hardwood runner rail that guides the layout, that guides the swinging gate closed. Uh, that's gates one and two. Gate three is the Slocan, uh, South Slocan Junction. Uh, here's a good view of the, the detente and hardwood runner that I use. Uh, and it swings actually on a bicycle neck through the middle of the track. Not the middle of the track, but through a, a central area that the track runs over. And then you can actually pull it open and closed. It remains pretty level. So you can actually stage cars on it. And I just use little brakes like this to hold them in place. They just clip over the rails to hold the, the, the cars in place. And then the, the tracks are lined up using the ball detente that snap into little holes that have been drilled into the hardwood. Just use a little bit of silicon grease to keep things nice and, and slippery. And that's worked very well. That's been in operation now for about three years. I haven't had any significant movement on any of those gates. The final gate is a drop down gate, which remains closed during the operation. And the weight of the gate uh, and the configuration of the ends, which is kind of like a bevel, drops into a mating bevel and uh, that holds the, the track lined up. So those are the four gates.